Chapter 36, Destiny. Hand me the torque wrench, Spark, said Allie's father, with his head down under the hood of the blue muscle car. Allie grabbed the torque wrench off the workbench next to her and handed it to him. Her father lowered his arms into the car, grunting as he tried to reach the bolts along the alternator. Allie stared out the open garage door beyond the trees of her parents' home at her old childhood snow sledding hill, which blocked her view of the horizon. She stared at the hill, pretending she was still an asphodel, gazing out over the edge of one of its many islands, ever blissfully floating high in the pastel sky. Allie's father stood up and looked at her with a look of relief, having freed the first of many rusty bolts. Allie stared transfixed at the hill, letting the breeze blow her bangs across her forehead. The dust shifted in the garage as her dad let out a long series of coughs, each one worse than the last. Allie broke away from her gaze and looked over at her father, suddenly drawn back home to her own world by her father's coughs. You all right, Dad? Allie's father took a drink of water from his thermos and cleared his throat. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I could ask the same thing about you, though. You've been quiet ever since we picked you up from the airport yesterday. <coughs> Something on your mind? I'm fine, Dad, really. She replied, looking back outside. You sure? I asked you to hand me the injectors off the table a minute ago, and you just stared at them like they were a nest of snakes. Allie didn't respond. She just continued to listen to the wind blowing through the trees outside. I remember the first time you had a crush on a boy in high school. That Roy kid, said her father, grabbing the dirty oil rag off the table. Ryan, said Allie, continuing to look outside. That's right, Ryan. You wouldn't stop talking about him the whole time we worked on the Orange Blazer. As much as you talk, though, I knew you just liked the idea of him and having a boyfriend and not of who he was as a person. I could see it in your face and in the tone of your voice. Allie continued to listen to her dad, gazing like a student lost in a daydream. She let the memories of Sim roll through her imagination, with him running ahead of her every step of the way. You mentioned that Sim guy back at the hospital only once. Yet even in that one mention of him, I saw your face light up brighter than when you'd ever talk about Ryan or David. Now you hardly say anything about him at all. Allie's father walked around in front of her. He pulled his glasses off his nose and looked her in the eyes. Do I need to go put the hurt on him for leaving my daughter in the dust? Allie looked into her dad's eyes, the same amber color as her own. She laughed. <laughs> no, Dad. Then what's been bothering you, Spark? Allie's father sat on the back of the car and continued to wipe his hands clean with the rag waiting for her to speak. Allie took a deep breath and looked down at the garage floor. Dad, what if I said to you, I met Alexander the Great? What would you say? Allie's father laughed before coughing a few times. <laughs> I'd say I'm jealous. Then I'd ask you what he's like. Allie's father joked. He was kind and sad. Sad that he had turned away from his own destiny, regretting it every second of his life, even when he returned home. All he wanted was to get back out there and keep following that path that was set before him. I'm jealous, Spark. Should have told me you went back to see him. I'd have come with you. What do you think he should have done? Allie asked. Allie's father thought for a moment. He accomplished a great many things in his life. I'd say he fulfilled his destiny ten times over by the time he abandoned his journey. Allie's father threw the rag on the workbench. I'd say if he felt like he betrayed his own destiny, then chasing after it again seems to me like the right thing to do. Because the sky has no limits, and you should never give up on the things you care about most. Allie looked up at him. What if I said I felt the same way? All my life, I've been afraid of the unknown, yet I still wanted to push myself. To go places and see sights I'd always imagined. Then, when I finally got the chance, all I wanted to do was come home. And now that I'm back, I feel like I turned away from the path that was set before me. 
Almost like I let the fear overtake me again. Allie's father stood up from the back of the car and took another drink of water. He set his thermos down on the workbench and sat down on the car next to her. Spark, I'd say following your destiny was the right thing to do, and still is. If you feel like you turned your back on it, don't make the same mistake Alexander made. Go find your path again. The most important thing in life is always being true to yourself and never lie to your heart. Don't follow a path because you feel like you have to. Follow your own path you set before yourself because you want to follow it. Because deep down, you know it's the right thing to do. Even if it meant leaving you and mom behind? Allie's father laughed. <laughs> You've got your own life to live, Spark. What is it I always said to you when we read those stories together when you were little? Allie paused for a moment, reflecting on her father's own quotable words of wisdom she could never forget. Make your own history. Exactly. Your mother and I have already made ours. Don't let us be the reason for holding you back. Your mother might not like it, but I know you have an adventurous heart. And nothing would make me happier than to hear you're living every day as an adventure. But your health, Dad. Allie's father interrupted her with a disappointed expression. Spark. Allie moved closer to her dad and placed her head against his chest. I don't want to leave you guys, though. We're always here for you, Spark. No matter the distance, we're always here for you. Allie's father held his daughter close. He kissed her on the top of the head. You know, it's funny. The other day at the hospital, there was a man who walked up to me while I was having a coughing fit and handed me a glass of water. I thanked him for it, and you know what he told me? Allie moved back and looked at him. He told me I had raised one amazing and wonderful daughter, and that I was very lucky to have her. Allie looked at her father, certain she knew who it was he had talked to. What did you say back? I told him of course I was, and we both laughed. The strange thing was, <coughs> he told me she would save a lot of people. Millions, in fact, and that I should be very proud of her. I looked at him thinking he was trying to sell me something or maybe he had the wrong person. Surprisingly, he didn't say anything after that. He shook my hand and left. Either way, I am still proud of you whether you save one life or thousands. Because I know that my daughter is already the biggest hero in my life. Thanks, Dad replied Allie with a smile, trying not to cry. Her father smiled at her, still seeing the young girl he raised standing right before him. He reached out and wrapped his arms back around her. Allie and her father sat on their broken car as they held each other in their arms. Allie felt courage from her father's words of wisdom. She was now ready to face the unknown once more ready to be home where she belonged. Got everything, Spark? Asked Allie's father, hopping out of the car at the airport terminal. The busy sidewalk bustled with people saying goodbye to their loved ones. The sound of planes flying overhead and cars driving by filled the air. Allie threw her bag over her shoulder and pulled her suitcase up onto the curb. She felt inside her pocket reconfirming she still had the communicator Erland and Walter had given her, planning to throw it away before heading to her gate. In one final act, she would be ready to follow the path ahead of her, knowing she no longer needed Erland and Walter's gift to remember what had happened. The journey had changed her forever, and that was the only memento she would ever need. Allie's mother stood with a handful of tissues she spoke, seemingly trying not to sound overly emotional. You have your passport in case you need it, right? Yeah, I think so. Allie replied. Allie's father closed the trunk of his car and walked around to her. Now remember, if you end up in a sticky situation, use that big brain of yours. We expect you to come home in one piece at some point. He said to her. 
Allie's mother started fanning her eyes. Oh my god, Mom, please don't cry. Allie pleaded. Her mother sniffed. I'm sorry. I know. You, you just stay safe, okay? Allie leaned forward and hugged her mother. I will, Mom. They'll probably have me go somewhere boring first, since I'll be new and need to prove myself. Please, let it be Canada. There's nothing dangerous in Canada. Her mother replied. Allie laughed. Her mom whimpered <laughs> and turned around to wipe her eyes. She turned back and hugged her one last time. I can't do this. I'll be in the car. I love you, sweetheart. Allie's father snickered as her mother blew her nose and hopped back in the car. Her dad extended both his arms out to his daughter, ready to give his last goodbye before she left. Allie held her father close. If that man at the hospital was right, you've got one hell of an adventure ahead of you, Spark. Now go make your own history. We'll be here waiting for you when you get back. Allie sniffed. She stepped back and wiped the single tear away from her right eye. Ugh, now you've got me crying. Best go then, before you miss your flight with long goodbyes. Yeah. Allie grabbed her suitcase and gave her dad one last hug, knowing it would be the last time she would see him for a while. Allie struggled to turn around and walk away, not wanting to leave. She walked toward the door and turned back for a moment to see her dad standing by his car door, taking in his last moment before seeing her walk away. That man you met at the hospital, I'm guessing he was old. Gray hair with really pale blue eyes? Allie asked. Allie's father shouted back at her from across the curb. No, much younger. Spiked brown hair. Had two crazy different colored eyes. Totally your type, though. Your mom even agreed with me when she saw him walk away. Allie stared back at her father, petrified with disbelief. Her eyes wide, her voice lost. Love you, Spark. Her father shouted back to her before opening the door and hopping back into his car. Allie stood, unable to move, watching her parents drive away. She slowly turned around and made her way into the airport terminal. She stopped inside the doors. She looked over at the trash can next to her. Allie reached down into her pockets and pulled out the communicator Erland had given her and her plane ticket. In one hand, she held her plane ticket to New York and the job she'd always wanted. In the other, a life she never wanted the one she now felt she was meant to have. A life with a man she had crossed ages with. A man she had come to love more than anyone else in her life. A man whom she had now abandoned. Allie looked ahead of her, trying to make her choice. Erlen stepped out from around the far corner of the ticket counter. He smiled at her clearly knowing which choice she was about to make. The same choice he always knew she would make. All Sim's life, he had been saving people. Now it was her turn to save him. Erlen smiled at her one last time as he looked down at his watch and tapped on the surface while looking at her. He turned around and walked away with his back to her, a smug stride in his step. Allie looked back down at her hands. Her fingers slowly began to let go of the ticket. The ticket gently floated to the floor. She moved her thumb over the screen of the communicator. A button appeared on the screen. With a single tap on the button and a flash of light, all that remained of Allie Claude were two suitcases left unattended and a single ticket on the terminal floor with no owner. Hi, everybody. This is Don Jacob, the voice of Allie's father from Sam Adventures Across Time. 
We love creating exciting and entertaining projects like this one. So if you've enjoyed your adventures across time so far, we invite you to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash T.S. With your support, you'll gain early access to the next chapter of the book and even a copy of the book itself. With your contribution, more thrilling and inspiring audiobooks can be made every day through the hard work, time, and dedication of the voice actors and artists all over the world, including myself, all working together. From all of us here in the World Between Worlds, we'd like to thank you for joining us on our adventures. 